Hi everyone, myself Akash Jain. I work as an engineer in Fonti software team, Samsung Semiconductor India R&D. And the topic for today's presentation is deep dive into Linux kernel life patch. So let's get started. So the agenda for today's discussion is about life patch and why do we need it? How code redirection is achieved using F-trace? Life patch implementations using kpatch and cage graft. Life patch in mainline a Linux kernel. Driver structure of a life patch. Limitations in driver structures approach. Why do we need ELF sections? Kpatch build and its example. And at the end, limitations of life patch. So, what is kernel life patch? So life patch is the ability for the kernel to change the flow of code execution from a broken or vulnerable function to a new or fixed function during runtime. In most cases, the new function is the exact same as the function it is replacing, but with minor changes such as adding a null pointer check or changing the order of some locking mechanism or adding a quick code fix. The code redirection is achieved with F-trace. So F-trace is a tool uh, which allows you to trace kernel function call, but it can also add and remove instructions from function as well. Like patch is implemented by compiling the new or fixed function into the kernel module and loading it into the system. Then F-trace is used uh, to redirect call from the old function to the new function in a kernel module. So there are two ways with which we can write a life patch as of now. First one is writing driver uh, using predefined life patch APIs and compiling it as a kernel module. Second is using source diffs uh, using kpatch build uh, binary. So in our presentation, we will be covering uh, both the approaches. Next is why do we need a life patch? So it is pretty common to see bug reports from Linux machines which have very high uptimes such as 6 to 12 months or sometime even longer. These machines normally run important workloads which can't be interrupted for a reboot since they might be a part of critical public infrastructure or a busy build system. The Ubuntu kernel team typically releases a new updated kernel for each distribution release on a three-week SRU cycle with additional updates always within a day of two of a new CVE being released. Machines with important workloads are not going to reboot in every six months or in every three weeks for each new kernel release. So keeping these machines safe and up to date with security fixes is a must and this is the motivation behind that patch. Code redirection with F-trace. This diagram shows how F-trace is used to redirect calls from the old function to the new function in the kernel module. Here F-trace patches out the NOP instruction which is no operation instruction with a call which points towards the new function. If you see carefully the NOP instruction is located before the function starts manipulating the stack. Which means everything is consistent and when the control jumps to the NOP instruction F-trace redirect it to the new or fixed function thus by bypassing the buggy or original function. Kpatch Kpatch is developed by Red Hat and uses a simple consistency model. Kpatch operates pretty much as explained before by using ftrace to change the knob instruction in the old function to a call instruction pointing to the new function. So as we can see from the diagram, which is, which is just similar uh, what we saw before for F-trace. 
here is just an addition of k patch block is there so how k patch works is k patch keeps the system consistent by first stopping all running task the stack traces of each task is then examined if the oid function is not found in any of the task uh, stack traces then f trace applies the patch and all future calls to the patch function will now use the new function so this approach is atomic and safe since there is only one view of the function at a time it is either old or new there are no consistency issues that arise if a new function changes data structures uh, differently to the old function and a structure is passed to task which haven't been migrated to the new function the limitations of k patch involve uh, not being able to modify data structures as if a process is still uh, using the patch function patching fails and all the tasks are restarted again to attempt the patch at a later point of time so there is some overhead in stopping and starting all all task which result in a small uh, loss of service as those uh, tasks are stopped the next implementation is k graph k graph is developed by sus and thus uh, is far more most complex consistency model k graph employs a per task consistency model uh, where all task remain running on the system and task are patched one by one so this gives no downtime at all since all task keep running during the live patch and patching can never fail so if we see a diagram we have taken an example so let's say we have a user space process making a sys call and a live patch request come in midway through this sys call if the sys call involved calling the function which will be patched multiple uh, times on a subsequent calling of the patched function the semantics uh, might have changed since the first time it was executed if the locking mechanism have changed we might uh, be facing a deadlock situation which will end uh, in a certain failure so as we can see in the diagram here is what k graph does is in this situation is it insert a trampoline so in our case it is a reality check function which is the target of the call function uh, which is uh, replacing the nop instruction of this uh, buggy function the trampoline uh, points to both the old function and the new function if the task has not been migrated uh, to use the new function the trampoline jump uh, to the old function or bug function and execution continues if the task has been migrated then the new function or the fixed function is called this means that any user space process in a sys call or kernel task or interrupt handler uh, still in kernel space will always use the old function this continues until each user space process finishes its uh, sys call or kernel task completes or interrupt handler completes so this diagram shows that all bug uh, task are then migrated over to a new function when all task have been migrated the temp trampoline is removed and the call instruction is updated to point directly to the new function the benefits of k graph is that all task are kept are on running during the live patch downsides include uh, keeping two different implementations of the same function around the same around at at same time so this can cause problems when uh, long running processes like those waiting on disk or network uh, io get uh, stuck in kernel space and won't be patched until they complete this can lead to inconsistencies if the new function changes internal data structures differently to the original 
since both function can still be executed in side by side so coming on to life patch in mainline our linux kernel so life patch was mainline into the linux kernel during the 4.0 development cycle the life patch implementation is a hybrid between the k patch and k graph implementations taking the best ideas from both LifePatch uses the K-Graph per task consistency and syscall exit uh, migration alongside K-Patch's uh, stack trace based switching. Patches are applied on a per task basis, one task at a time and there is no downtime as tasks do not need to be stopped. This also means that the trampoline based solution is used so the consistency model for mainline operates in a set of steps so first is uh, the stack trace of all sleeping task is checked if the function to be patched is not found in the stack trace the task is patched to use the new function if this fails for a particular task it will re-examine the stack trace periodically and attempt to patch at a later point in time the second step is to patch the task once it completes and exits from kernel space such as syscall finishing or an interrupt, interrupt handler completing. So we will be considering Ubuntu in our context. Ubuntu uh, uses the like patch consistency model uh, which has best of both k patch and k graph. All code is the same as what is shipped into the mainline uh, kernel. Uh, and there are no custom changes. So the upcoming uh, three slides tells about the driver structure of a life patch. Please note uh, the life patch API has been changed over time. So uh, we will discuss the life patch API as found in Linux 5.4 focal. As you can see, uh, since the life patch is a kernel module, it follows the same process required uh, when writing a kernel module. So here we include the kernel module header file uh, such as module.h, kernel.h and livepatch header file livepatch.h and declare our module underscore init and module underscore exit function pointers. Here first we will map the new function to the old function by defining a struct of type klp underscore fun in this case called functions and fill in the members such as dot old underscore name and dot new underscore fun. Since we might need to replace more than one function in our life patch, we can create many of these function mappings since functions is an array. We then tell a life patch what to patch with struct klp underscore object. We set uh, dot funds uh, to our array of functions and set uh, dot name to be another life patch module. Uh, this has a dependency on or simply uh, null if we want to target VM Linux. So like patch init uh, function uh, will contain APIs for registering and enabling uh, our patch module. Like patch underscore exit function will uh, disable and deregister the module and new underscore xyz is our patched function. And at the end uh, this is wrapped into a struct klp underscore patch which where we declare the module name and the object struct this is the struct uh, we pass as a reference to when klp underscore enable underscore patch is called called we can build the driver with the following like patch make file which is similar to any kernel uh, driver make file so for that first you need to install a compiler and a kernel header for your running kernel as apt-get install linux headers hyphen uname hyphen r apt-get install uh, build essential then go ahead and run make so after patch module is generated 
insert the attach module uh, using ins mode after that you can see your new function getting a live patch without even a uh, need of a reboot uh, coming on to the limitations in driver structures approach so we can use this approach when we want to write a complete a uh, new basic function say uh, for example changing kernel uh, cmd parameter this approach won't work uh, when we want to patch the existing code but if we try to patch the existing code uh, with this approach uh, during build time we may face error because uh, when the module object build uh, it cannot be linked because the compiler does not know the offsets or locations of the functions which reside in the unstripped or stripped uh, vm linux binaries so to resolve this issue we need to add elf sections to the object file which will tell the kernel like patch subsystem how to apply relocation for each of these functions into the kernel that we are targeting so here comes uh, the need of elf sections so there are two elf sections that need to be add on so first one is shf underscore rela underscore like patch second is shn underscore like patch so first one uh, shf underscore rela underscore like patch is used to declare the function which need to be redirected with f trace that is the functions that are actually being like patched shn shn underscore like patch are all the local symbol uh, that the fixed function calls and need to be fixed up each section needs entries of the form dot klp dot rela dot obj name dot section underscore name where dot klp dot rela denotes the relocation section name is prefixed with the string dot klp dot rela obj name denotes the name of the object that is vm linux or the name of module to which the relocation section belongs follows immediately after the prefix and section name denotes the actual name of the section to which this relocation section applies an example for shf underscore rela underscore like patch would be this uh, dot klp dot rela dot vm linux dot text uh, dot mem info underscore proc underscore show here mem info underscore proc underscore show is the patched function these elf sections uh, need to know the addresses and offset from the vm linux binary coming on to the kpatch build so it is a, an automated build pro program which can generate live patches from the source diff and programmatically fetches uh, and insert these elf sections which contain the symbol relocation table kpatch build uh, is a collection of tool which convert a source source uh, diff patch to a patch module they work by compiling the kernel both with and without the source patch comparing the binaries and generating a patch module which includes a new binary versions of the function to be replaced the primary steps in kpatch build are first build the unstripped uh, vm linux for the kernel patch the source tree rebuild the vm linux and monitor which objects are being rebuilt so these are the changed objects recompile each changed objects with hyphen f function hyphen sections hyphen f data hyphen sections are uh, resulting in the changed uh, patched objects unpatch uh, the source tree then recompile each changed object with hyphen f function hyphen sections hyphen f data hyphen section resulting in the changed original objects so for every uh, changed object uh, use 
create hyphen div hyphen object uh, to do the following task. First one, analyze each original uh, patched object pair for patchability. Then add dot kpatch dot funds and dot rela dot kpatch dot funds ELF sections to the output object. The kpatch core module uh, uses this to determine the list of functions that need to be redirected using ftrace. Then add dot kpatch dot dynamic relas and dot rela dot kpatch dot dynamic relas. These are the two ELF sections to the output object. This will be used to resolve references to non-included local and non-exported global symbol. This relocation will be resolved by the kpatch core module. Generating the resulting output object containing the new and modified sections. Link all the output object into a cumulative object and at the end generate the patch module. So we will be seeing uh, the example uh, in the coming slides. So the steps needed to build kpatch build source code is First, we need to install some packages and dependencies. Then we will clone the kpatch source code and will uh, build the source. The next step is to download the ddep package, which is the debug uh, dev package for the kernel. Uh, we wish to make a like patch module for a list of all kernel ddep packages can be found at the ddep uh, package repository. We will be targeting 5.4 kernel, so we need to download and install a Linux image unsigned 5.4 uh, debug sim uh, ddep package. The resulting uh, debug vm Linux will be placed uh, under a uh, lib uh, debug boot directory. So ddep uh, package is generally a debug symbol package for debugging uh, symbols from a vm Linux binary. So here uh, we have implemented one functionality which will give some of all the untracked kernel memory allocations such as slab, uh, vmalloc, per CPU, kernel stack, page table, socket buffer, etc. So for that we have taken a kernel 5.4 source and using meminfo.c file uh, under the fs a proc directory from the kernel source code. Here we won't be discussing about the patch functionality implemented. Our focus here is to implement the changes and get the diff out of it. As we discussed before, kpatch build operate on source diff. So we will take a diff for uh, our patched function. So now we got the source diff. Here uh, we need to take care of one important point which is uh, the kernel source that we are targeting. We should take a diff from that kernel source code only. If we don't follow this approach, our patch uh, won't build and it will throw error during the compilation time. So now we will compile our patch file uh, using kpatch build binary. kpatch build uh, works by first downloading the source archive of the kernel that you are targeted that you are targeting which is determined uh, by the vm linux package you pass in from there the standard uh, vm linux is built normally once that completes uh, the so source tree is patched with the uh, patch you specified and it is rebuilt again as we know that only meminfo.o got changed, so the single object is compiled again uh, with hyphen f function hyphen sections hyphen f data hyphen section uh, flag in both the patched and the unpatched form. Then each unpatched and patched object set is then analyzed by create hyphen diff hyphen object to determine what functions have been modified and to extract the changed functions. 
this program also checks for uh, like patch compatibility so the special part of create hyphen div hyphen object is that it creates the necessary elf symbol uh, relocation sections to the patched uh, object file it adds a uh, kpatch.funs and dot rela dot kpatch dot funs uh, symbol which tells ftrace what functions are actually going to be left patched it adds dot kpatch dot dynamic relas and dot rela dot kpatch dot dynamic uh, rela symbol uh, which are used to fix up uh, symbol relocations for a uh, local function call in the fixed function to symbol in vm linux so from there uh, kpatch build generates a new kernel module containing all live patches which is ready to be used so we insert the module uh, using ins mode uh, also we can check our live patch function status with uh, d message logs as you can see uh, mem kernel functionality got live patched and gave uh, some of untracked uh, memory kernel memory allocations So for permanently installing a live patch, we should give a kpatch install to our patch module. For listing all installed live patches, we should give kpatch a list. For those ELF sections, we can examine the kernel module to see them using a read ELF bin binary with hyphen hyphen sections and hyphen hyphen reload. flag uh, with our patch module so coming on to live patch limitations so live patching is only for critical uh, security problems linux kernel uh, patches can fix linux kernel live patches can fix vulnerabilities if the problems can be isolated to a small and specific portion of kernel code however if the problem is complex and affects many functions or affects data structure live patching can't be done only functions that can be traced could be patched linux kernel security fixes uh, must be written by experts even simple patches require an advanced knowledge of linux and c if the patch is intended uh, for production servers it must be thoroughly tested across a wide range of platforms and kernel versions this takes enterprise level equipment and skills uh, to do properly this comes to an end of a presentation i thank you all for being a part of this presentation and i thank the whole uh, linux foundation committee for giving opportunity to showcase our work if you have any doubts regarding this presentation please feel free to ask in chat thank you everyone